Welcome to my review of Stranger Things season four, which just wrapped up and uh, this is going to be the penultimate season. Yeah, I can't believe it. Just one more season after this one, season five. And uh, this time around, I was just really impressed by the overall production and the scale of the world building. Uh, what they did with the Upside Down and Vecna's Nightmare Dimension looked to me like something out of an HP uh, Lovecraft story. It had that level of cosmic horror and terror to it. Um, so let's dive right into this review. I want to take a look at the opening scene, which starts with the mysterious mass murder of Dr. Brenner's child test subjects. The shots of the victims, with their eye sockets horribly removed, is pretty gruesome, and even caused the posting of a disclaimer before the episode in light of the recent horrifying school mass shooting in Texas. Was there a justifiable reason in the show for depicting these grisly child murders? The horror genre always has an element of shock to it. Deaths happen in horror movies and shows all the time without a clear narrative reason behind it. Sure, the intent to shock is definitely in Stranger Things, but I also think the show gives a legitimate story reason for the violence. For instance, many of the story arcs involve some kind of childhood victimization or trauma. For example, Chrissy Cunningham is haunted by the specter of her abusive mother. Fred feels survivor guilt for surviving a car crash that killed his family. Then we have Vecna, the child of Victor Creel, who we learn was taken by Dr. Brenner, becoming his first test subject, named Juan. Like Eleven, he was subjected to dehumanizing experiments where he was brainwashed and tortured. Vecna is kind of the prime example here since he preys upon his victims specifically through activating their buried trauma, as he did with Chrissy, Fred, and Max. I also liked how these issues of childhood trauma are placed in the context of the satanic panic of the 1980s. Jason leads his basketball team on a witch hunt to find Eddie, who he believes murdered Chrissy. Eddie runs the aptly named Hellfire Club a geek squad devoted to the role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. In the 1980s, Dungeons and Dragons was viewed as a satanic cult. So I like how these historical details are worked into the story arc. It adds some historical depth while also tying in with the theme of child victimization, which was one of the primary concerns during the satanic panic. Just like Eddie, many innocent people in the 80s were wrongly accused and even convicted through witch hunts fueled by religious fanaticism and extremism. I thought this was a nice subplot, which shows how we hurt ourselves through the demons we project through our own fear and hate. Chapter 4 in this season was one of my favorite episodes, when Vecna possesses and curses Max. She finds herself at Vecna's altar within the Upside Down. When Vecna proudly shows Max his macabre collection of trophies, where he has his victims on display, composed of corpses hideously coiled in his root-like tentacles, he appears like an artist showing her his work. I'm pretty sure the Duffer Brothers had the horror icon Pinhead in mind for this scene. Pinhead is one of the kings of body horror. This scene is all the more disturbing since it implies that Vecna keeps his victims on display for no other reason than for his own pleasure. I also enjoy Joyce and Murray's side adventure to save Hopper, who was captured and detained in a Soviet prison camp. I also love the Russian contact Yuri. He's the guy who takes the uh, ransom payment from uh, Joyce and Murray in exchange for Hopper's release. and. I just found him utterly hilarious and he's kind of for me like the American stereotype of the sketchy, grotesque, decadent European. He just has no loyalty to anyone, like just whoever pays him the most money, he'll do anything no matter how horrible it is. Uh, he serves no lofty purpose and so it, it's kind of fun when you get a character like that and he's also one of the characters on the show that actually has a sense of humor and is laughing a lot and it's kind of funny how you know, the character who has absolutely zero morality uh, is the one who has the most sense of humor. Although they do try to reform or redeem him at the end, uh, which I totally didn't buy and didn't make sense to me, but I can understand why the uh, 
writers wanted to just have him keep doing more things and keep him around since he was such a fun character. Eleven spends a lot of her time in this season in an underground research facility run by Dr. Brenner. When she is put in an isolation tank to reactivate her powers, I found the flow of the narrative a little encumbered by heavy exposition. Here we get most of Vecna's backstory. He's a character that takes multiple identities to a new level. Before becoming Vecna, he was formerly Henry Creel, child of Victor Creel. When Dr. Brenner, creepily named Papa, took him in, he became one, the first and original test subject. He was later renamed Peter Ballard before being transformed by the Upside Down into Vecna. Shit, that's four different names and identities. Maybe it's just me, but the isolation tank, called the Nina Project, had heavy shades of the anime Akira. In Akira, the cryogenic containment unit storing Akira's frozen remains looks very similar to the isolation tank of the Nina Project. Plot-wise, too, both Akira and Stranger Things share similarities. In Akira, the military unit designed to activate psychic abilities in children, called the Project, is similar to Dr. Brenner and his experiments on psychic children. I was also reminded of David Cronenberg's 1981 film Scanners. Scanners are humans with psychokinetic abilities. Revik, a rogue scanner, is similar to Vecna. Revik hopes to join forces with Cameron Vale, where they would lead a new generation of scanners to conquer the world. Just as Vecna tries to coax Eleven to help him fulfill his murderous plans of world domination. This season definitely feels more cinematic than previous seasons. Um, that's partly due to the length of the episodes, uh, which are movie length. They run anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. But I appreciated how they go much bigger in this show, uh, much more epic in scale, but they still take time to have those little moments between the characters. And um, throughout this season, I've been waiting for several character reunions to happen as I'm sure all of you have been waiting for as well. And in the finale, we do get those reunions and they're very delicately handled, I thought, very well done. And um, like one of the ones that stuck out for me was um, the scene between Will and Jonathan, um, a scene where they're just pouring out their hearts, uh, sharing their brotherly affection for each other. Uh, in, in a scene that could have been, come off as, you know, really, maudlin and cringy and overly sentimental but the two ac actors just do a fine job just selling it and because they could be going to their deaths uh, this could be it for them so uh say what you gotta say now um and then in that spirit uh, i also liked uh the scene between uh, joyce and hopper when they're un undressing and then they, they, and then they just go out and start making out. And that was great too. And it felt really real to me. Like, you know, after a kind of traumatic, horrifying experience where you, you know, almost faced death and survived it, that, yeah, you'd probably, you know, be, you know, if you have two people in love, they'd probably be going at it, you know, making out, you know, right after something, having that <laughs> experience. So that, it felt like really like grounded, like, real real kind of moment and authentic moment um and uh that's what stranger does things does so well is um having paying attention to the characters and making sure that uh, that y you have the emotion there and because that's a big part of why i watch this show i, I come back to it as much for the characters because i love hanging with these characters they're a cool gang to hang with and uh uh, I love these characters as much as I love all the supernatural sci-fi horror stuff going on. Another thing I wanted to touch on was um, Dr. Brenner's death. Uh, and I thought they totally were going to redeem the guy. Uh, it seemed to be heading in that direction. Um, but with Dr. Brenner, he always has an agenda. He always, he's this almost narcissistic figure. Um, and so I thought... He's done horrible things. He's tried to murder people, have people killed. He's experimented on innocent children and tortured and brainwashed them. Um, 
just done really sick, sick things. And so to redeem them at the end just didn't seem um, true to me. And, and so, and they don't end up actually redeeming his character. Um, he, uh, he asked uh, Eleven basically to understand him, to forgive him for what he's done. And she doesn't give it to him. And I thought that was a really good choice on the part of the writers. I also want to touch on the big reveal in this season regarding Vecna's character. Uh, and I had always thought he was a puppet of the Mind Flayer. Well, it turns out it's the other way around. We find that uh, Vecna actually created the Mind Flayer or almost willed or conjured the Mind Flayer into existence um, as this almost like um, ultimate vision he has of what he wants to become. And they tie it back with uh, Vecna's childhood as Henry Creel and Henry Creel's fascination with spiders as the ultimate predator. And so uh, Vecna creates a spider-like entity, the Mind Flayer, um, as uh, the ultimate predator because he views himself as the ultimate predator and he thinks the only way to get there um, to evolve and, and uh, become, you know, the dominant species, as it were, is to become superhuman, to become transhuman, to become completely other, hence uh, the Mind Flayer. So, I mean, that's pretty cool and interesting. Uh, I would say... Um, that there's some consistency issues with me with that with uh, prior seasons that um, there wasn't quite enough set up um, just with uh, Vecna or or um, Henry Creel not enough like set up with his character you'd think that Dr. Brenner would have alluded to him or to some entity in the upside down he would he was searching for um, so it felt to me a little tacked on in this season. Um, and uh, another part of that um, piece of that is that the Mind Flayer for me, part of the interest and fascination of the figure of the Mind Flayer is that he's this, or sorry, he, it's this collective entity. It like absorbs you into itself just as it did um, you know, take over Billy or several, you know, a number of the inhabitants of Hawkins and um, kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing, if you've seen that, it kind of takes on your attributes and just uh, becomes you and you become it in this par parasite host relationship. But it's, the Mind Flayer is just not one thing. That's an important thing. It's many things. It's this collective entity. entity. So I thought to say that the Mind Flayer is just the creation of one guy, um, kind of uh, deflated a little bit of uh, the horror of the Mind Flayer's complete otherness and irrationality, that it brings it back to a more you no know, rational kind of human evil where you have just one agent behind everything. Um, and maybe season five will further explain what's going on. But as of now, it seems like, um, you know, Vecna is the main puppet master here within the Upside Down. He's pulling the strings, he's shaping everything. Um, and I thought it was a more interesting choice to, you know, ha keep the Mind Flayer as this kind of collective thing, this irrational thing that was completely other outside the human. But now we find it kind of stems out of our humanity. Um, and uh, so... Um, I think um, overall, though, I did really like Vecna, and and I, I mean, I have to say he's probably the most formidable villain that that we've ever had on Stranger Things, uh, and I think he's mostly just a, a great addition to the se to the series. Um, so this is a much more plot heavy and um, densely intricate, you know. Um, season for sure but i think they really pulled it off uh they really went big with this but they also kept what we what i love about stranger things um you know those emotional you know really heartfelt um relationships between the characters so really looking forward to what they do with season five i'm just i'm gonna see it the moment it airs and um so i'll be waiting for updates about that um but anyway 
hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you haven't and you know i'll see you in the next video here bye